Hello, welcome back. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you to all of you who have recently subscribed as well. Welcome. And well, if you've been tuning in to these videos for a while, again, welcome. I appreciate all of you being here. And what's even more important than that is what your being here actually means. And that is you are dedicated and committed to your spiritual practice. I thank you for that, because that, in fact, is the highest and best offering you could ever give anyone, anywhere, and nothing even comes close to that. So the fact that you're showing up right here, watching this video amidst all of the other content on this particular social media site, much less the rest of the internet, there's it's a lot, there's a lot of stuff out there. And, and you're here which says a lot. And what I hope you come out of today's discussion with is the fact that you're almost there. You are at the very end of a long road and what has been in time an ancient journey and you're almost there. If that were not the case, you would certainly not be watching this. That's for sure. So with that, <laughs> with that deep, profound, and I hope highly motivating and, well, uplifting series of comments, let's talk about love shall we? Not love that the world sees and worships in all of the popular music lyrics. Rock and roll, country, <laughs> you name it. Lots of songs about love, lots of websites about love, lots of people's businesses that you'll see all over the internet based on love. We're talking about Love with a capital L today. That's the focus of our conversation, which is based on chapter 18, section 8 of the text. And this section, which we started in the last video, is entitled The Little Garden. And the underlying premise here today is that Love reaches to itself. It is totally abstract and doesn't know any bodies. It knows no bodies. It's completely abstract and it reaches to itself. Another way of looking at this is it reaches to everything created like it. It does not recognize boundaries, and this applies to every sort of boundary or barrier that we could devise here in the world. It doesn't recognize our artificially drawn boundaries that we call borders of our nation states. It doesn't recognize that at all nor does it recognize all of the boundaries that we draw within that nation state, such as individual states or provinces, regions. It doesn't recognize any boundaries at all because it is completely unbounded and completely limitless. It extends to everyone everyone, not recognizing any difference. There is no separation of any kind. Love extends to all. And what we sing about in our 
popular music and what we read about in romantic bodice ripping beach novels <laughs> or something like that it is in fact not what we're talking about here in the course yes love reaches to everyone everywhere those relationships that are the subject of so much of our attention here in the world are what the course refers to as special relationships in other words exclusive relationships this of course takes many forms our romantic partnerships are special relationships almost by definition because it's a partnership between two people or if if you're polyamorous two or more right but it's not with everybody in the world is it so that by definition is an exclusive and what the course refers to as a special relationship we form these in business with our companies with our business partners and associates nation states are an example of this where everybody that lives within the artificially drawn boundaries of a nation state is seen as a fellow citizen and everyone outside, well, <laughs> these relationships appear to dominate our lives and the course calls them special relationships for very good reason. We think in these special relationships that everybody that's in the club is cool. And everyone outside, not cool. It's a form of judgment and a separation idea. It is. So it appears here in the world that we're not able to function without these. Well, I mean, that's what it looks like. And while we appear to be here, <clears throat> remember, love recognizes no boundaries at all. Boundary. Human body, a boundary. Right, because, I mean, look, it appears to be different from 8 billion other human bodies, 8 billion plus running amok wherever people happen to find themselves on this wobbling spinning ball of rock. Which is what it is, isn't it? Hurtling through what we call space. Yeah. Love doesn't recognize any boundaries at all. So what we do with our special relationships is very important here. It's very important to recognize that you are not going to be deprived of these relationships. If you have a wonderful marriage or a romantic partnership, as I do, the Holy Spirit's not going to take that from you. Really, of course not. Of course, he would not do that. If you have an effective business partnership, for example, the Holy Spirit's not going to deprive you of that. Here's what we do. Give that relationship over to him. Give our special relationships over to the Holy Spirit for his purposes of healing the mind, of extending love. Try it. I've tried it. Cindy and I have done just this. And I can tell you with absolutely no doubt at all that our relationship is deeper. Our connection is stronger. Want to try it? Try it. Do it. Give your special relationships, all of them, over to the Holy Spirit for the purposes of healing the mind, for the, his purposes. In other words, you'll be directed as to what to do, as to how to extend love. Use this as a communication device 
to reach your brother. I'm fond of saying, and of course it's true, that what you're looking at is a pixelated image on your screen. What's talking to you is your inner teacher, the Holy Spirit. That's what's going on in this and every video. So when something connects with you, when it resonates, when it lands, it's him. It's not this. This is nothing special at all. I mean, look, it looks like a dude with gray hair. I mean, how common is that? <laughs> Very. Right? Nothing special about the image at all. It's your message that you get from the Holy Spirit that, ba that matters the most. That's what we pay attention to, because love is completely abstract. Now, here in this particular section of the text of A Course in Miracles, the world that we've wrought as we run around thinking we're an ego, as we run around thinking that we're individual self-sustaining survival units, a phrase that I love to bring up, here and there. I mean, that that describes what we think we are. We think we're a human body, an individual, with all of our titles, with our name, with our job, with all of the labels that we add and heap upon ourselves. All of them made up completely. All of them, when you think about it. Which, of course, you're invited to do. This world that we appear, appear to inhabit, is wildly inconsistent at best. Wow, that may actually be an understatement. <laughs> I mean, really, it's wild full of suffering. We have moments of bliss and tenderness, joy, and of course they're interspersed with all of the drama. And in chapter 18, section 8 of the text, this situation that we appear to find ourselves in is likened to a desert with no water and brown dust everywhere, very little plant life, which I always have to laugh when I come across this section of the text, because I live in the desert. This pixelated image on your screen appears to be broadcasting from the idea that we call Arizona, with the big tall saguaro cacti, those, yeah, the Wild West, of the United States, which of course is an idea, and North America is an idea, the world itself an idea. Right? I always have to laugh about that because this in fact is the desert. And it, it is not completely bone dry and desiccated and devoid of life. In fact, I'm in the Metro Phoenix area and the Sonoran Desert is in fact the wettest desert on the planet. There's a lot of vegetation. But I digress. If you've been here, you know. The ego world is likened to a desert. When we invite the Holy Spirit in, it transforms into a lush and verdant garden full of green, full of life. When we invite the Holy Spirit in and when we extend love, the miracle of true forgiveness, when we extend love to our brother, this bone dry, empty desert is transformed into a garden of life. And at the end of this particular section of the text, comes the idea, which you know deep down, that you're at the end of a very long journey. In fact, the Course calls it an ancient journey. You know that you're at 
the end of it. You're nearing the end of it, and you are nearer to what we call awakening than you imagine yourself to be. This is true of all of us. We're right there. All that remains is just a thin layer of dust, a thin veil, which we can blow away or lift. It's true, even if you don't feel like it right now. And there's, well, there are many, many reasons why you may not feel like that right now, because we have bills to pay. There are financial difficulties sometimes. Even if you're rich and you've got it made money-wise, there's always something that crops up in, in your life that irritates you. Yeah. I mean, there are days on the path where it feels like nothing's working. But think of this. If you're having one of those days, think of where you started out on your journey, on your walk, the path, whatever you want to call it, and whatever this has looked like for you up to this point. Think of where you were then, whenever it was, whether it was last week or 30 years ago. And where are you now? And I mean, in the mind. Are you more loving? Are you more patient? Are you more forgiving? This thought of, wow, look how differently I see things now. That's very important on these days where it feels like nothing is working at all. Think also of this. It doesn't take too much observation on our part to see that the vast majority of the world doesn't give a crap about spirituality that they don't appear to, and, and they may pay lip service to it, but they're not focused on it. And it is what it is. They will be, maybe not in the course of this lifetime. I mean, it's not up to you to decide that. It's not up to me to decide that. You know, they'll begin the path when it's time for them to begin it. And, and right now there appear to be many, many of us that aren't even interested in it. You are, which means you're right there. So what I invite you to do, what your inner teacher invites you to do, is to take whatever the next step is. And if you're not sure, ask him. He'll tell you. All we do every day here with this course is allow ourselves to be led as far as we're able or as far as we're willing to be led on a given day. Just that. And our inner teacher will guide us. So whatever this next step may look like for you, I invite you to take it. All right. So I thank you for tuning in and again for your practice. It really is something that I can't possibly emphasize enough. The importance of your being here and taking the time out of everything else that you've got going on in life to come and listen to this message. I, I really deeply appreciate that. And when you think about what that means for every single living thing, it's pretty profound, so I hope you realize that. Along the way, there are bound to be questions, and if you've got them, you're more than welcome to ask them here, right here on the comment thread on YouTube. And even if you just want to pop in and say hello, I'd love to hear from you. Again, if you have not subscribed, please do. That's the prompt in the corner of your screen. Click that arrow and join us. Thank you to all of you who have recently joined us. There have been quite a number 
of you. The community, of course, is online and it's international. Part of the beauty of today's technology is we can reach each other all over the world. It's pretty cool. So uh, welcome and subscribe, please, if you have not already. Several videos appear each week, and I will see all of you on the next one. Thanks, as always, for tuning in.